All right, guys. So today we're going to talk about, um, what was that? Uh, God, what was that? Oh yeah. Short-term memory loss. Now this can relate to the beginnings of dementia to all the way over to Alzheimer's. So the symptom of memory loss has everything to do with the hippocampus. And the Greek term for hippocampus means seahorse because that's the shape. And you have two of them, one on the left side, one on the right side. So that way, if one goes, you have a backup. So related to short-term memory loss, I have some good news and some bad news. The bad news is that as you age, the hippocampus actually starts to shrink, okay? So age is definitely one thing you're up against. So you just have to stay as young as possible. Number two, if you decrease oxygen, you can destroy the hippocampus. Number three, stress will definitely affect the hippocampus. It'll actually make it atrophy and shrink. The more stress you go through, the more you can have atrophy or shrinkage of your hippocampus. I mean, it's pretty easy nowadays to avoid stress, right? All right, number four, high glucose. Diabetics are at risk for having damage to their hippocampus. So high carb diets are not very good for the hippocampus at all. Number five, a vitamin B1 deficiency. So vitamin B1 is, I would say, the second most important nutrient for the hippocampus. I put some links down below for more information about B1 because you want to make sure you're getting enough B1 from the diet to make sure that you can preserve the hippocampus. Now, number six, a vitamin D deficiency. Out of all the areas of your brain, a vitamin D deficiency will affect the hippocampus the most. So it's a very good thing that a vitamin D deficiency is very rare nowadays or else we'd be in big trouble. Now, that was a sarcasm because a vitamin D deficiency is extremely common among most of the population on planet Earth. And number seven, if you have a zinc deficiency, that can majorly affect the ability of your hippocampus to function, resulting in short-term memory loss. Okay, so that's the bad news. What is the good news? Now, the good news is the hippocampus is one of the only areas of the brain that can completely regenerate. Whew. Thank goodness for that. So if we just go ahead and look at the list, we have to stay as young as possible, number one. We want to increase oxygen to our hippocampus. Exercise is one of the best ways to do it. Another way would be to use the hyperbaric oxygen therapy. But overall, you want to keep your oxygen at a very high level. Now, the next thing would be fasting. Fasting, including intermittent fasting, is a very powerful therapy to increase something called BDNF, brain-derived neurotrophic factor. And so by doing fasting, you increase that compound, which directly increases neurogenesis, which is the creation of new nerve tissue. All right, next one is to start taking vitamin D. As I said before, vitamin D is the most important nutrient for your hippocampus. And also start consuming food high in zinc. That would be all the shellfish. Also, uh, beef liver has a good amount of zinc in it. And taking more B1 is very, very vital. Uh, I would recommend taking nutritional yeast on a regular basis. And the last thing I want to mention is to decrease your stress as much as possible. Do whatever you can to do that. And of course, applying these other things is also going to reduce stress, especially if you do regular, consistent exercise. The type of exercise that will increase more oxygen. Long walks would be a really good thing. Now, the next thing is increasing your ketones. Ketones are the preferred fuel of the brain, especially the hippocampus. In fact, you're not going to be able to regenerate the hippocampus without feeding it ketones. And there's several ways of increasing ketones. Number one, getting on a low carb diet. Of course, you probably already know that. If you're new to my channel, I put some links down below of exactly what diet you need to be on. Number two, consuming MCT oil. Very, very important. Medium chain triglyceride fats will turn into ketones and your brain will actually absorb them um, in preference to glucose and you'll see huge benefits. You can also take 
exogenous ketones. They're called ketone salts, and that will also increase your ketones. They're a bit expensive, so it might be cheaper to take the MCT oil, but more important than MCT oil and exogenous ketones is getting on a ketogenic diet, keeping your carbs low, and that's going to be very, very important in restoring the hippocampus. All right, guys, there you have it. Those are the key things to help you with short-term memory. Before you go, if you have a question about a product or you're new to keto and you want to know how to begin keto or you're on keto and you need a debug because it's not going as smooth, I have a keto consultant standing by to help you. This is just for the people in the U.S. Hopefully in the future we'll be able to answer everyone's call. But I put the number down below so you can call and get some help.